I'm sure there must be a long list from back when he was young. We could tell the story of the poor rabbit's haircut when Dad also cut off the tail down to the butt. Or try to turn a trailer around by hand to face the other way, or only to end up running for his life down the driveway. <laughs> but if we needed to be nice, it would have to be short and sweet. I guess we could tell how he is kind of neat. Sometimes poems can be a little cheesy. We thought of doing an interpretive dance, but would end up all wheezy. <laughs> so, Dad, we've come up with the acronym of your name. Please forgive us in advance if it is really lame. So, <laughs> just relax and listen to what we have to say. So, here we go, Dad. Your name starts with J. J is for John, a husband, pa, and father, a friend, a son, and also a brother. O is for all the orange juice you make for the grandkids, <laughs> being well aware they'll complain if they find any bits. <laughs> H is for the house he's made to a home. Thank goodness there is not a welcoming no. <laughs> and is for never being able to say no to all our requests no matter how far he has to go. Aww. G is for the glasses you wear on your nose. Without them he could not tell the difference between a shovel or a hose. E is for everything he does for everyone with care, no matter what he has. Dad never hate, hesitates to share. Oh, it's so hard there are three in Dad's name. So I'll say it's Sarah's fault we have nothing to pass on the blame. <laughs> R is for the running he did in his 20s with ease, but if he did it now, he would buckle at the knees. <laughs> G's for George Clooney that he met at LAX. He would not have run into him if he was flying Tiger or Rex. <laughs> I is for the ice cream cake, the only dessert he can make. He well and truly makes up for it with his pastas, rice and steaks. <laughs> oh, is for overseas trips. He has had too many to share, but lots of phone calls and Skypes remind us to care. <laughs> U is for undeniably being our dad that's so great. No matter what everyone else says, we don't think you're second rate. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have finished what we set out to do. We hope you have the best birthday and Father's Day too. This little poem, although really bad at times, is full of love and not just silly rhymes. We love you with all our hearts, it is true. You are such a blessing to us through and through. So he loves and values everyone that he comes in contact with. He may not be able to remember their names. So we have a lot of people sweetheart and champ and darling and mate. Can't remember anyone's name. We call each other by numbers now. So number one, two, three, and four to help dad out. <laughs> but he loves everyone as well. Um, with his family, I've never seen a grandfather who's more loved by um, their grandkids. They love his, their pa and the special treats that you buy for them, whether it's pa's fruit. Um, for the boys, or watermelon, or grapes, or cherries, or ham on the bone for Wiley. <laughs> um, you know, you know what they love. Um, your hospitality is something that I also really value as well. Um, I don't know whether it's just a wolf thing, and you wolves can agree with me or not. But the way that you show a lot of love through food and always encouraging people to have just one more <laughs> piling on their plate anyway, um, and also making sure I have a delicious lunch to take to work all the time. <laughs> all my friends are well. My old work were really jealous of my dad because I had delicious lunches every day that dad would make for me in the morning or the night before. Uh. <laughs> um, 
Um, or even when him and mum go overseas, he cooks oh, lots and lots of meals and puts it in the freezer oh. for me because I'm 27 and can't cook. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. And I even get in individual bags of pasta in the freezer That's it. just in case I can't figure it out. Um, also your generosity. You are the most generous person that I know. Um, you're always offering your car to everyone to drive. Doesn't matter what you end up driving as long as we're driving something. Um, you're generous with your gifts and your knowledge and your time. When I did work experience with you back many years ago, Dad would always take the long way home. It would take him an extra half hour every night. And I didn't know, I just thought it was the way that he went, but I found that at the end of the two weeks, he used to drive that way because there was a church that I really liked. So he would drive that way every night just, so I, could, yeah, just so I could see it. Oh, what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I've, I've, I guess, learned from Dad as well is his passion for music. So it's something that Dad and I share a lot. Um, as everyone would know, his favourite artist is Bob Dylan. He sings about as well as Bob Dylan does. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and you're always willing to share any, any knowledge that you have with music and listen to new artists that Rebecca and I have found and we love and you may hate, but you'll listen to it anyway. Um, something that I really value about Dad is his ability to work with technology. <laughs> He's amazing and by amazing I mean the fact that he hasn't had a heart attack so far from anger with technology. When Rebecca was two, Dad would get her to turn on and off the computer for him um, and open programs. And there have been times where he gets really, really frustrated with his car because the sensors aren't working. And he curses them telling me he's going to take your car back and I always ask to have a look and I go in and flick them on for him. Um, so he's a little bit incompetent there. Um, he said incompetent, incon okay. That's yeah. <laughs> that comes later. <laughs> um, and also Dad's work ethic is something that everyone who's worked with him knows he has a really strong work ethic, which is something that um, we've all learned from Dad as well. Um, you've, you provide abundantly for your family um, and you've got a great work ethic. Um, you talk about retiring one day. I think you mentioning to John before, you have already tried retiring once and that lasted for a month. Um, maybe another time you can try again. <laughs> Um, I also, you could have said that. <laughs> that's what I said, Marilyn. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, uh, yeah. The honesty, yeah, amazing. Um, yeah. Also, just think I value that you do a lot is protect us. Um, so whether it's protecting me from the horror of Bronte's death. <laughs> so Bronte's very old, and every time Dad goes anywhere and I'm, I'm home, he always makes sure he tells Bronte not to die while Dad's out, so I don't have to deal with it. Um, and also phone calls all the time if I'm having a tough day or going through something tough dad calls me during the day to check how I'm going and I've heard him call a lot of people who are going through tough times and he just calls to check in and see how they're going and let them know that he cares. Um, dad's also a great comforter he tries and be really tough and strong but there's lots of times where he'll he'll just give me a big hug and rub my back and let me know everything's going to be okay. Um, also a carer, he may sometimes be challenged in the care department. I know when we were younger and he'd make our sandwiches um, some days for school we'd end up with sultanas and sprinkles and Vegemite in one sandwich because he liked it. Yeah. Um, so he, can, he can struggle a little bit there sometimes. Um, but he, he cares for everyone as well. Um, Dad always has a positive outlook in every situation, um, even though things some things he's gone through can be tough. He always looks at other people and recognises that he's so blessed in life. Um, he's a man of his word as well, except, except when he's talking about retiring. Um, <laughs> though he's really old now. Um, <laughs> he doesn't have a mindset that's limited to age and he's always open to new suggestions. Like shopping at Country Road. Yes, yes. yes. Laura, yes. Thank, you, Laura. Thank, you. Laura. thank you. My shopping consultant. Yes. And um, what happened to the white shirt? <laughs> yeah, the white this shirt. is still Country Road though. This is still Country Road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I talk a lot about how awesome my, my papa is, all my friends talk about how great my dad is because they've met him and they know what an awesome man he is. Because they get a free free when they come <laughs> <in>. <laughs> Even my friends who haven't met dad yet, they still talk about how awesome he is and how they want a dad like my dad as well. Um, so I, I, for me, I hope to find a man one day who will treat me as well as my dad does, who will care for me and protect me and love me as much as he does and provide for me. I hope it's soon, Laura. But you are really good. Thank you. Thank you.
please clear or this will go over. Can you grab the cup? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. it, I can sit down there. You've got to say a few words, don't you? <laughs> I've got one more. When I finished high school, I even tried to study business so I could become a businessman like him. And um, then he broke to me that he sold encyclopedias door to door. Oh, so I quit uni and <laughs> spent work experience with that at Trade Scene. <coughs> You've taught me so much, Dad, and you have made me the woman that I am today. <coughs> Not only can I tell the difference between micro suede and suede and accurately guess the import price of pretty much any Barbie shoe, <laughs> but there are so many things that you've taught me that um, does define who I am. I think one of your most defining characteristics is generosity. You taught me that generosity is not defined by how much money you have, that it's a lifestyle decision. Your generosity hasn't changed from easy walking days through to the fantastic days. Generosity is a choice that you've made. Um, you've always given without reserve, and you give anyone that shirt on your back if they ask you for it. Except my country road shirt. Standards. You can have dessert in a minute, buddy. Come on, next Recently, your generosity is extended to bananas. For oh, these my two. little boys, yeah. And they love it. I think Miley would prefer a leg of ham, but she probably takes bananas anyway. She does. She, I buy her a leg of ham once a month. That's what she wants. Yeah. Leg of ham. That's true. It's, it's true to me, Claire. She loves ham. Leg of ham. Every month. It's fun. And your generosity has flowed down to my boys. Um, they always talk about being generous. The boys would give anyone anything. And if I ask them, you know, what's one of our family values, they'll always say generosity. And even today we're at the park, the two boys they'd never met who are in foster care. And one of the little boys said to Jesse, can I borrow your football? And Jesse goes, well, you can just have it. <laughs> I was like, he's never met this kid. But he didn't have any toys and was with a foster family he didn't know. So Jesse's just giving away his bomber's football. It's very cute. You've told me that the size of your wallet doesn't determine the size of your heart. And that money in your pocket will never make you happy. But giving it away will bring joy. True. Another defining characteristic is your hospitality. I love growing up in a home where there was always food to eat and friends could come over. It was always open and welcome. I knew that if I brought friends, they weren't going to go hungry. They'd have someone's meal and they'd always be left over. And when I got married, I had never cooked a meal. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and we got a few weeks out of being out from Warrigal and saying, I have to learn something. Teach me your pasta sauce. So I drove from Warrigal to Melbourne. We spent an afternoon in the kitchen and he taught me how to make pasta. And that was my first meal that I ever cooked. And we had it many times a week because I had no other options. And then I got taught lasagna a few years after that. And so your hospitality is not just about your food, though. It's welcoming people and loving people and enjoying people. And they say that kids and dogs are a good judge of character. And I think the fact that your six grandkids adore you and Bronte adores you. No, because I feed her every night. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the grandkids adore you. <laughs> it's the food. <laughs> I think it's a testament that when they light up when you walk in the room that you're an alright character, Dad. I'm proud to call you my dad. I love you and you've guided me through life and you teach me so much even today about love and generosity and compassion and acceptance and I'm proud of you and I love you. Thank you, darling. Hey, the good stories are over. <laughs> The only time you allow your children to tell lies is for your 60th and your 50th. And you're allowed to tell lies my next birthday too, girl. Oh, no, this is wrong. Oh, no. 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 Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, 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 it's got a picture of you. Of course. Talk about vain. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't know what to say, John. But there's <laughs> <laughs> a few things I may mention. Um, 
I, I've known John for more than 40 years, and, and I suppose because of that, um, I, I was asked, and I've got all the dirt on him, I was asked to, to make a, a few comments on this occasion. Um, first of all, John, no one's mentioned this. We're here to celebrate your 60th birthday. Ouch! <laughs> yes, John, you are a senior. <laughs> yes! Yes, John, the government will send you a card. Yes! Our Julia will send you a card yes. to confirm this. Just discounted the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the slick about it, eh? <laughs> Senior's pub meal. So I know you're, you I, know, you're, I know you're in denial about this, but it's true. You've joined the club. And it's funny, not everybody wants to join the club, but only the lucky one wants to join. So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay. Um, in the early years, when I first met John, um, life was good. We, like our, our years were divided in two seasons. We had winter, we worked during the week, on Saturday we would go to the footy, <laughs> and we would watch Detroit lose. <laughs> so, then it was the Berg. <coughs> the Berg. The Berg. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, um, and on occasions we would go to uh, Powerhouse. Uh, we would also lose there. <laughs> in summer, it was Anglesey. Anglesey. <laughs> right. Uh, we work hard during the week, and then we would go down to the beach to Anglesey. Uh, they were the times. Um, it was a tent. It was pitched up um, around November. Taken down around February. Um, it was only for four people, that's what we always used to tell the uh, proprietor. Four people only, well, 14, 15, 20, a card, been playing cards all night, um, going to Storky's uh, for a 24 hour takeaway. Um, and what else did we have? Yes, we had lots, 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 <laughs> what I remember were, were the, um, were, were the darkies. Let me tell you. <laughs> they, they were horrendous. And, um, um, and, and he, he was one of the best. <laughs> I, I will come to that point later. Now, I really don't want to talk too much about it because it could, we could be here all night, and so I'll keep it brief. So I'll only a few examples. Now, what have I learned from John? What have I learned from John? Well, I suppose the first thing I remember learning from John was surfing. Oh, oh, look, let me tell you, we'd be sitting there on the beach, watching, and I'd be watching John surf, and he was brilliant. He would paddle out. He would. Get up onto the surfboard, and within a second, he would dive off. <laughs> and, and it was always in different angles. It was just brilliant. And, and I've been told uh, from people watching me surf that I had captured. <laughs> His technique perfectly. Um, I'm not sure whether that was, but that's what he did, and I really learned that from him, so I am very grateful to him. Um, has John changed for the better over these 40 years. Well, I, I, I think he has. I think he has. I mean, very, few of us have sat in the same room with John and um, all of a sudden this silent, but yet deadly odour <laughs> walked across the room. And, and, well, we knew where it was emanating from. I mean, poor Marilyn came back for this. And, and how has he improved? Well, I'll tell you, about 12 years ago, 12, 12 years ago, like magic, it was like a virus, it went from John to Bronte, and all of a sudden, it was Bronte, it was Bronte, it was these beautiful odours, um, it was just magnificent, now, now, I, I, 
as I said, I'll keep this brief. And, and so I, I'll, I'll go away from the many, many things that he has taught me and, and the many changes he has brought, brought on. And, and, I'll, um, and I'll explain why John and I have, been, have remained friends for all these years. It's like Abbott and Costello, Yang and Yang. John. Some is twins, Claire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John. John gets up in the morning, goes to work, works hard, pays his taxes. I stay home, I relax, <laughs> and the He only gives me his taxes. <laughs> um, uh, a recent trip to the Napa Valley. Perfect. <laughs> John would drive from winery to winery. I would drop drink at every winery. <laughs> it was just a, a, a match. magnificent. Um, and um, I, um, I don't know what else I can say. All the nice things about him. But uh, to be serious, and I think the girls have covered um, most of this. Um, John is. It's got a lot of uh, skills. Let, let's, let, let's talk about John's skills as a handyman. We all know that. Fred, don't go there, please. Um, I wouldn't let the other team. Don't go there, please. Um, uh, probably, probably there are some. players took a little half of those. Probably there are some. The list is certainly not endless. Uh, um, but on a more serious note, and, and as I said, the girls have covered most of this. You know, John has got some wonderful gifts. Um, he, he's he's truly a great friend to, to most uh, all of us here and and, and uh, many others that aren't here. Um, he, he works as hard as anyone I know, um, and, and to provide for his family. <coughs> uh, works too bloody long. Uh, uh, to tell you the truth, when I said a few words on your 50th. I, I didn't keep the notes because I didn't think I'd have, need them. <laughs> uh, you, you need to take care of yourself, okay, on a serious note. Um, um, and his generosity, I, I think you, you hit it, uh, I mean, he's one of the most generous people I, I know. Um, his family life values, uh, you know, as a husband, a, a father, and, and let me tell you, and his son-in-laws, you guys are Pretty lucky to have. You hear that, Marika? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Marika, in, in, in case in point, you know, we've had a lot of boys' night out, um, and we really enjoy Marika's, the two old pod just taking him out. <laughs> John, or, you know, really enjoys having Marika um, with us. Um, 